All right, guys, I'm back with another video. So I was just going to show you this. So I'm playing the montage on the overlay slot with custom uh, layering settings. Now you will notice that uh, because of the pose ends uh, in a different pose than uh, the pose that he's in right now, it is going to snap. Uh, that's just how it is. Um, I'm going to look into uh, possibly experimenting with a procedural foot correction setup uh, or system for this at a later date. Maybe next weekend I'll uh, experiment with that idea. But right now it's important for you to know that on that to disable IK you have to add a metadata curve to your animation. I've already added these to all the uh, traversal animations. So we no longer have to depend on whether the default slot specifically is currently active or not. Uh, if we open this up, and I'll just do this again. So I'm, I don't actually want this on, want that on here, obviously, because he's holding a pistol. But if I needed to disable IK, I could add a metadata. And in case you guys don't know, the only difference between a curve and a metadata is that a curve starts with a value of zero, metadata starts with a value of one, it's a static value, you cannot change it. And since this is a disable, uh, and we only need this to be present when we want it to be disabled, uh, we can just use a metadata curve. And so if you add a metadata curve of disable IK, it'll be a value of one, and that'll automatically disable the animations. So in the aim offset, you'll see that I'm getting the, I'm disabling this. If the disable IK has an alpha of one and on here, I'm doing that to the leg IK as well, because in some situations, uh, the leg IK can actually cause problems when you're playing montages. So I went ahead and did that and I just inverted the value. So I remapped it from zero to one to one to zero so that when this is uh, disabled, the leg IK will have an alpha of zero, which means it'll be disabled. Um, yeah, so another thing I did right here is a performance thing. I moved it from the game thread. In case you guys don't know, this right here is updated on the game thread, this and everything connected to it. So inside of here, you'll see I disabled this. And if we go back over here and we press this hourglass or this magnifier glass icon, you'll see I just moved it into here. I made it thread safe and I'm getting these uh, using property access uh, nodes. So I went ahead and left this in place. I'm not sure how much of a performance gain you'll get from that. But by default, it's important to know that testing is enabled, which means this will always be true. When you disable this, what happens is if we say go here. Yeah, so, so on the update layer, layering settings, so you'll see this is updating the layer settings, but if we go into the update layer values, you'll see it's interpolating. When it's done interpolating, it'll enable uh, or it'll disable should update layering data. When it is interpolating, it'll enable it to prevent it from being shut off. If we don't do that, it'll be shut off automatically. Uh, so. If we're playing an over overlay slot, right now I only have this set up for an overlay slot. So, uh, and this is, is slot active is the only way to tell if a slot is playing. Uh, if a, a montage is playing, you can't say is any montage playing uh, because that's not thread safe. It's not a thread safe function, which is why I had to use this. Uh, so we would actually have to check for each slot that we want this to bypass the chooser table for. If we do not bypass the chooser table, uh, then the chooser table will override any injected layering settings that we apply. And I'll talk to you about that here in a second. 
So that's basically what I did. I moved it from the uh, game thread to a worker thread to reduce the workload on the game thread. Uh, that should improve performance under high stress situations. Now, as far as injecting, I'm using the blueprint interface that I'm using for this stuff here. And I'm setting the layering settings. And I'm enabling should update layer data in case uh, you guys disable testing. You need this to be enabled in order for the current layer settings to start or the updated current layer settings to start interpolating. Otherwise, they'll stay as they were. Um, so over here, I'm just getting the anim instance off the mesh, and which is this right here. It's the animation blueprint. And I'm using, I'm calling that blueprint interface function and I'm passing in the data asset. You could technically do this from a, an anim notify on the animation montage itself. Uh, and I might set something up to, like that for you guys uh, in the future, but it's not difficult. You could do it yourself if you wanted to. And you'll see I have disable IK uh, set right here. And these are irrelevant. Oops. Let me see. Yeah. So anyway, that's that's all I'm doing, and I'm playing it on the overlay slot. Oh yeah, that's what I forgot. So on the animation graph, if we go to the anim graph and we go into the layering settings, I'm updating the uh, or I'm playing the slot right here before I cache the overlay pose. And the reason why I'm doing it right there and not right here is because if we if they're holding a weapon and you're playing an animation on that slot where he's not holding a weapon, then he won't be holding the weapon properly anymore. And the reason why is because the weapon bone will be oriented differently than it is in uh, this overlay, this current overlay state. And so over here, you'll see that I'm fixing the weapon bone orientation to be from the overlay state. So if we were to play it right here, then it would just grab it from that montage. That's the reason why I put the overlay slot inside of here. So I do have all these other slots here too. You guys might find it useful, uh, might find them useful in certain situations. And they should work just the same as, as I am playing it right here on this one. And that's pretty much it that's the update for this guys and tomorrow i'll probably be doing a video where i go over this entire system all over again from scratch since the last one is in fact outdated um, and i'll see you guys in the next video